Hello, in this video I'm going to be looking at how to soft proof your images and so we can use this tool to create amazing prints coming out your printer and the soft proofing tool can help us to do this. So how does soft proof work? Well basically it simulates how a custom profile or printer profile is going to affect the colour of your picture and it's going to do that on screen. Also, it will try and emulate the paper white balance and it will also try and emulate how the ink is going to react with that paper. Now, there's a few things we need before we get started on soft proofing. The number one thing you need is a calibrated monitor because we can profile the printer but if the colour isn't the same going forward, then we just need to update those profiles and make them correct. The next thing you need is a printer profile, like I've just said. We need a profile to make things consistent as well. Now this can be a generic profile, but I highly recommend having a custom profile made as well. And it is free with photo speed. It just costs the sheet of a paper to print the profile in chart and the cost of a stamp to send it in to us. And this will produce the best colour your printer is capable of. So those are the two main things you need to be able to do this. Also, I should add, you do need a piece of software that has the ability to produce a soft proof for you. I'm going to be using Photoshop to do this, um, but I will do a separate little video on how we can do this in Lightroom as well. So please, if you're a Lightroom user, please find that as well. In Photoshop, You'll find the soft proof menu under view at the top here. And we go to proof setup, then custom. Now this brings up this box here for us. And this is our soft proof panel, shall we say. Now the top bit, we have a device to simulate, which is going to be our printer. And this is where we assign the profile for that printer. So we can put any profile that we have in there, which is the paper we're going to be printing on. So if I put smooth cotton in there, because that's what I'm going to print on. And then underneath, we've got preserve RGB numbers. Now, always leave this box unticked because we don't need it for the purposes we're going to be using. And as you can see, it just takes all the colour out, so it's just awful. So what we want to do is we want to then go down to rendering intent. And this is where we can select if we're having relative or perceptual rendering intent. And we can even have a look at what saturation and absolute does as well. And we can use those rendering intents as well, but it just gives an idea. Relative and perceptual are the ones we're going to be looking at though today. We'll just see which one we prefer. I'm going to pop it on relative. Also black point compensation. You can tick this on and off and you can actually see what it does. So it affects, if you tick it off, and you can see with this paper type, everything is going to be really blocky and horrible. But if we keep it ticked, it just starts to bring everything back a little bit for us there. The other options what we can do is we can simulate the paper color which is the white point of the paper, and simulate black ink. So that is going to be the contrast and the density and the dynamic range of the print. So how the ink is going to interact with the paper. And as you can see, if I tick it on and off, it just goes a little bit foggy. So we just need to bring that back in a little bit as well. So I always don't generally tick simulate paper and colour. I usually leave that unticked because I was always taught that your eye will adjust for the colour anyway, but the black ink I will tick because I just want to bring this. The black ink I will tick because I want to bring in the back in the contrast of this picture and make it pop again. So I'll just now click OK because we're all set up there. We've set up our proof that's going to go over the top. OK, so we have our soft proof over the top and we know there's a soft proof applied because if we go up into our file name up here 
it actually says the profile in brackets at the end. So we know there's a soft proof applied to here. And if we wanted to turn it off, we go up to view and we tick, or we untick, should I say, proof colors. Or press the command or control key if you're on a PC and then the letter Y. And it'll go on and off for you. So we can switch between the two. Okay, so now we've turned the soft proof on. Now, I see there's two ways we can use soft proofing. Now the first one is to create another picture that we can then alter the colour on and produce an accurate replica of what we edited on our screens to start with, if that makes sense. So let me show you. So here we have a smooth cotton uh, soft proof applied to this picture. If I go to layer, duplicate layer, and I'm just going to duplicate this image as a new document, just there. Now this one doesn't have the soft proof applied. So we can flip between the two and we can try and make this soft proof one look like this original edit here. That is one way to use soft proofing and probably the most common. The way I use soft proofing is to actually edit my image for the paper. Now this is probably the artist in me coming out but I see that I'm going to pick smooth cotton for this image here. So I'm going to edit for smooth cotton. I'm not going to do a general edit and then try and fit it to smooth cotton. I'm going to edit it for smooth cotton using the soft proof tool. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. Now we have the soft proof assigned here and we've got smooth cotton profile assigned as we can see from the name at the top here. Now what I want to do now is go into view and I just want to go into proof setup again and I just want to check how I've got things set just to make sure nothing's changed which is fine I have everything ticked that I should have ticked and I'm just going to click OK. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the gamma warning. This will highlight areas which are out of colour gamma. So over here we have big blocks. Now this looks like there's shadow detail being blocked in here. So I'm going to start by using the dodge tool at about 50%, well actually I'm going to put it up to about 60% and I'm making sure I've got it on the shadows and protect tones is ticked. Then I'm just going to start going over these details here. Now this will bring in, or start to bring in, should I say, that detail that we've lost. Now I'm just going to turn off colour gamut wall, the warning, and just start to blend it in a little bit more. So we're just a little bit, if you go too much, just click back. Just needs a little bit in here, so it looks right. Start to bring that in there. Okay, now we'll go back and turn the gamut warning back on. Looks a lot better in there now. We've still got parts in there, but we are going to have a solid black as well. Don't forget, so we're not going to get perfect because there will come a point when the printer says no more, or the profile says the printer can produce no more. So it's a lot better in there. I'm just going to go over the boat as well in here, these parts as well. Now in here it may be that there's some mid-tones need bringing out, so I'm just going to bring those out. Yeah, a few little mid-tones in there. And there could be even some highlights as well, so I'm just going to vary. got to be careful when you do the highlights, because it can look a little bit too much. I think we're okay there. Okay, now in here, I'm just going to use the shadow detail again. I'm going to get a bigger brush and just go over the house here. The 
I'm just going to turn off gamma warning again. Just come back. Okay. Now I'm just going to do a layer adjustment as well. I'm just going to do a hue and saturation layer adjustment. And with the color gamut on, I'm just going to alter saturation of the print just so we can try and bring this down ever so slightly and try and get those completely gone in there. Now I'm going to do another layer adjustment of levels and this is so I can start to bring back a bit of a the punch of that image. So you can see we've got a big gap here so I'm just going to what I call pinch the levels as you see the gamut warning comes back straight away but we can try just alter that and I want it a little bit just going darker I'm gonna have it a little bit brighter to be honest there I just want to bring these blacks in a bit as well because I know I'm going to lose a little bit. And now we'll go back to the gamut warning. And as you can see, these have all come, we've got a little bit of these coming back in now. So we just need to buy, dodge these back out. Because we don't want all this darkness in here. Now, between editing the paper for paper and editing to match your original edit, there isn't really a lot of difference in the techniques you're going to be using. It's just your final outcome. I personally don't want to look at that edit I made, or was made for me, should I say. I just want to edit for what I'm going to get on this paper. always go backwards and forwards between them so we can just see what is happening and if we're creating a mess basically underneath which we could have a little bit here so I'm just going to bring that back in with the burn tool a little bit and again we're just painting with the, the tools we have um, I've just bring this in a little bit so then I'm just going to start creating a bit more effect in here as well. Let me just keep going until we're happy. Always checking that gamut warning just to make sure we've got things coming through. So if we did go between the two we have this picture here got that it is going to lighten up and we could say that we need we do need a little bit more contrast it's probably a little bit too much in here perhaps we might be reaching the point of no return now really with what the printer can produce and there's limits of this paper now I might just do one final adjustment now I may just go into the curves and I'm just gonna have a quick look just to see any difference so I'm just going to switch it on and switch it off actually I prefer it without a bit punchier and I'll maybe just fine-tune the saturation as well so now we have kind of got a print on the screen and we've edited it to the paper so this print will look different if we printed this on a luster as well 
and that's the thing you've got to edit for the paper you're working on if you just do one universal print it will look very different on very different types of paper this is the look I would like for smooth cotton it may be a different look I go for if I'm printing on say a luster or a brighter just because the paper will be able to do more for me I'll be able to put a little bit more punch in there as well the matte papers do tend to like the more subtler tones so I hope that's helped a little bit the only thing left to do is to print this so we go to print and now <coughs> Photoshop will ignore the soft proof we've done we're going to be applying the profile in the color management section here so it doesn't need to apply the soft proof to it it will print what is underneath this soft proof so if we turn off proof colors you will see what we're actually going to be printing that doesn't look half bad actually but however when we print it on the paper it will come out a little bit more like that I'd say it'll come out with a little bit more punch as well. Thanks so much.